Hi everyone, this is Dr. Hall. We're starting lecture 10, so all about the breast, and then lecture 11 will be about breast cancer. Starting off with breast anatomy. So a little overview. So the breasts are, are of course, milk-producing glands or mammary glands, right? That's the whole purpose for their existence. So they're actually technically modified sweat glands that end up, instead of producing sweat, producing milk, and in a very particular way and under very particular circumstances that we'll get into in 10C. So these are the mammary glands that we have. They typically only develop in the female-bodied person. However, sometimes they can develop in male-bodied people too. In that case, we call that gynecomastia. So this image here is of a male-bodied person on the left with some development of the breast tissue, which is not common but can occur. And then uh, they had surgery uh, to, to change their appearance. And uh, so that's a post-surgical picture on the right. So this is part of what makes us mammals, right? So we're warm-blooded, we have hair on our bodies, and we nurse our young. Unlike other mammals, not all, but many other mammals, however, we only have two breasts, two teats, so to speak, right? So cats and pigs and dogs, they have several in pairs located down their abdominal uh, surface, right? Along what are called milk lines. And so we humans are not that evolutionarily uh, separate from other mammals. And so we have these kind of residual milk lines. And sometimes people can be born with an extra nipple, which is called polythelia. Um, and if they are, it will be located along these lines that you see here. So here's an image of a singer from the band One Direction, and he's actually very open about the fact that he has a couple of extra nipples. And uh, let's see if I can point those out for you. There's one here, and then there's also one here. Right, as you can see, those are along those milk lines, right? So if you have something that looks kind of like a funny mole, but it's along one of those milk lines, it might actually be an extra nipple. Fun. All right, this is all of that information in text in case you need to pause the video and uh, complete your notes. So when we look more closely at the external anatomy of the breast itself, of course, the most noticeable feature is the nipple and the areola. So the areola is that area of pigmented skin around the nipple. It's a, usually a more darkly pigmented skin, but that can vary from person to person. Of course, the nipple is the bump in the middle, and that's the part that milk is going to flow out from. But then there are also these little tiny bumps located around the areola, and those are called Montgomery glands. And they produce a moisturizing substance for the nipple and areola, which is really useful when you're nursing a baby, right? It's kind of like your own supply of chapstick or lip balm for something that's gonna get a little chapped. And um, I bring that up because sometimes people, if they haven't really paid attention to those or noticed those, um, sometimes they're like, ah, is that, a, is that a wart? What is that? Those are totally normal little bumps, just little glands that make a moisturizing substance called Montgomery glands. On the inside is where some really interesting things are found. So first of all, you can see at the top they've listed suspensory ligaments. So these are these little ligaments that extend all the way from the chest wall muscles out to the surface of the skin, and they help support the breast tissue. So when you look at the breast of a very young female-bodied person and compare that to a very elderly female-bodied person, and the breasts are kind of sagging, that's because those suspensory ligaments do stretch out over time. You'll also notice that there's a lot of yellow in this diagram. All of that yellow tissue is actually adipose tissue or fat. And in fact, most of the breast, most of the time, is primarily composed of fat or adipose tissue, which gives it its texture, its soft texture. You can also see in this image these purple uh, glands, these mammary glands. And they only look this large in someone who is currently breastfeeding, somebody who is currently lactating and producing milk. The rest of the time, they're pretty small. But what you can see is that those mammary glands, which produce the milk, 
then drain the milk into a little duct called the lactiferous duct. And then some of those ducts come together and form a larger part called a lactiferous sinus, and then that'll channel out through the nipple. So you have a mammary gland, and then it goes to a lactiferous duct, and then a lactiferous sinus, and then out the nipple. Here is another uh, diagram kind of showing you the same thing. So I will point out, because I think I didn't last time, that the breast is actually technically an accessory organ of the skin. Um, so it's sitting on top of the muscular chest wall, on top of that pec major muscle is where the breast tissue is sitting. We have those mammary glands, and you can see the little arrows here showing you the direction that milk will flow. So from the mammary glands into the lactiferous duct, and then into a lactiferous sinus, which is like a wider duct, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, out the nipple. And then again, you can see all the Well, all the lighter yellow tissue, and that's the adipose tissue that the rest of these structures are sitting within. So it's really important to note that the main determinant of breast size and shape is the amount and distribution of the adipose tissue or the fat. From one person to another person, if they're female bodied, the volume and number of the mammary glands is pretty consistent, right? So when you have someone who has smaller breasts versus someone who has larger breasts, the, the main difference there is not how many mammary glands they have, it's the amount and distribution of adipose tissue. So it also then goes to show that breast size is not an indicator of someone's ability to uh, successfully breastfeed in the future. It's pretty unrelated. Another really interesting internal feature is the lymphatic drainage of the breast. What is that? So the lymphatic vessels are kind of like poor cousins to our circulatory system. And what happens is constantly throughout the day, our cells are oozing fluid into the spaces around them. That fluid then needs a place to go to get back into the circulatory system. And it does so through lymphatic ducts, little tubes that bring that fluid in the case of the breast, you can see all this green up near the armpit. So fluid that leaks out of the normal breast cells will get channeled through these little lymphatic ducts. I think I have some animation in here. Yep, there it goes. And then up towards the armpit or the axilla. And in the axilla, you will find these lymph nodes, which are these little kind of like little P-shaped things. And lymph nodes are like these little uh, monitoring stations along the lymphatic channels where you have immune cells. And these immune cells are like your lookouts. They're your spies. They're looking to see, is there any evidence of cancer in the breast? Is there any evidence of infection in the breast? Okay, they're your surveillance team looking at this fluid as it comes from all the different tissues all over your body and saying, is something going on there? So if you've ever had a sore throat or a bad cold and you're like, oh, my glands are swollen in my neck, those are your lymph nodes and they're full of immune cells. And so when you have an infection, they're activated and they get swollen and they can feel sore because they're swollen. So you have all these immune cells that are actively fighting the infection. So that's really important for us when we think about breast cancer, which we're gonna talk about um, in lecture 11. So again, this is that same information just in text in case you wanna pause and catch up with your notes. So this top image is showing us where, if somebody has a breast cancer, the first place that that breast cancer is likely to spread because of the movement of this fluid through the lymphatic system is to those lymph nodes in the armpit, in the axilla. So let me highlight for you, hopefully this color will work. Here is a breast cancer in this image. And then they've circled for you the lymph nodes out here because because of that fluid direction from the breast up toward the armpit, cancers, they like to spread, but they're going to spread along the path of least resistance. There's already fluid moving from the breast to that armpit. So the first place that a breast cancer is likely to spread is to those lymph nodes in the armpit or the axilla. Okay, so that's really important to remember. 
Now, having said that, I will also tell you that swollen lymph nodes in the armpit are really, really common, especially in young people who are maybe shaving their underarms and getting some ingrown hairs or some little tiny cuts or little infections uh, because of that. So uh, having a swollen lymph node or cyst or something in your armpit in a young person is most likely to be just irritation or infection due to something going on in the armpit much more likely than anything untoward happening in the breast, okay? So don't worry. So I mentioned this before. So breast size and shape varies greatly from person to person, but it also can vary for an individual person depending on their overall body size, right? If they tend to be a little bit bigger versus a little bit smaller, as many of us tend to do during the course of our lives, and their hormonal status. So breast size will change during the menstrual cycle and uh, breasts will tend to get a little bit larger when estrogen and progesterone levels are high and then a little bit smaller when they're very low, such as the very beginning of the follicular phase. Also, if someone is on hormonal birth control, that can change breast size. In fact, I've had some patients where whenever they went on birth control pills, their breasts went up a cup size. And some people were really happy about that. And then some people, such as my long distance runners, were really unhappy about that. So it varies from person to person. And so again, I'm really hammering at home that the major determinant of breast size and shape is the amount and distribution of the fat or adipose tissue in the breast. Okay, everybody has pretty much the same volume and number of mammary or alveolar glands. I'm sorry, I used the word alveolar there. They're, they mean the same thing. Um, so breast size doesn't predict your ability to make milk. And I thought this is cute. This is from a bra manufacturer, um, but, you know, they have these different descriptions of different types of breast shape and sizes. So speaking of shape and size, breast asymmetry, right? So being larger on one side versus the other, it's actually very common. In fact, in fact, it's kind of more rare for someone to be exactly the same size and shape on each side. So some mild asymmetry uh, is very common, but sometimes it can be really severe. So in this example that we see here in the image, that's maybe a cup size. Um, but sometimes it can be even more than that. Sometimes somebody can be like only a B cup on one side and then an E cup on the other side. And as you can imagine, if you're very asymmetrical, that makes it pretty much impossible to find clothing that fits. Um, and so they'll usually do corrective surgery for those individuals. So as long as it's not something that, you know, if your breasts were pretty much the same size all of your life and then all of a sudden one of them got a lot larger, that would be concerning. But if it's something that just kind of developed over time in puberty, that would be pretty normal. All right. So in summary, breasts are milk producing glands, part of what defines us as mammals. And inside we have those mammary glands that make milk that will then travel out through the lactiferous ducts into lactiferous sinuses and then out through the nipple. On the surface, we have the nipple, the areola, that pigmented skin, which also has those Montgomery glands that produce a moisturizing substance. The lymph nodes for the breast are primarily out in the axillae or out in the armpits. And we talked about how it's all about how much fat you have in your breasts that primarily determines their shape and size. And shape and size can fluctuate to, from not only be different from individual to individual, but also vary according to your hormonal status. Some people can have extra nipples called polythelia. Some male bodied people can have breast tissue development and that's called gynecomastia. And some asymmetry is pretty normal. So that's it for 10A.